Hello and welcome to this video with me Coach Reese. I hope we're all doing really well. So in today's video we're going to take a look at the defensive approach that involves man marking. This is an approach that we would associate with Marcelo Bielsa. So we'll take a look at some of the concepts involved. As always I will leave timestamps and chapters below. Let's get into it. So man marking is slightly different to what we would call the norm when a team are out of possession. When a team are out of possession, we would often see them move into some kind of block, and this is more to protect zones. Whereas with a man marking approach, it sort of flips that on its head and players are assigned an opposition player who will then mark throughout the game. So the man marking approach will usually always be partnered with a ball orientated press or during transition a counter press and the reason for this is to hopefully win the ball back quickly or it will delay the opposition's attack in such a way that it allows our non-pressing players time to engage the opposition player that they will now mark. One of the key concepts within a man marking approach is what we would call the minus one and plus one. Usually with our striker we'll have a minus one. So this means that we will have our striker more than likely up against two centre backs. And the plus one occurs in our defensive line. So we will have ideally two centre backs up against one opposition striker. Now, if we are up against two strikers, in order to help us maintain that plus one, we will need to use a back three. So if you think about Marcelo Bielsa, when he was up against two strikers, we would often see his teams use the 3-3-1-3. Three, three, three. This allows the team to maintain that plus one in their defensive line. The role of the striker is to force the opposition to play either into their left or into their right. And once this has happened, our striker will need to stop the opposition being able to transfer the ball from their left to right. The side in which our striker forces the opposition to play into could be something that's decided pre-game. So if we think about pressing traps, a target player is something that we could use. So our team may have identified the opposition's left back as a potential weaker player within the defensive unit who gives us an opportunity to win the ball back if the ball's played into them. So we'll use that as our example. Our striker has cut off the right side of the pitch, forcing the opposition to play into their players on the left side. So once this has happened and we force the ball into the opposition's fullback, our player who's man marking the opposition fullback is now responsible for engaging that player. Hopefully, once our players engage the opposition left back, we can win the ball and we can turn that into an attack on goal. So now let's think about the plus one and our free player. So the role of this player is to provide support wherever and whenever is required by the team. So for example, the opposition's attacking midfielder has become free and our player who's marking this attacking midfielder has lost them. So now the opposition have a free player and it will fall on the responsibility of our centre back who is our free player to be prepared and ready to man mark that player to stop them potentially receiving the ball or it can just give our player who should be marking them an opportunity to recover and pick their player back up. And this leads us into another concept within the man marking approach and there is a little bit of flexibility. It's not just a case of our player A marks opposition player A and they just stay with them until they get the ball. If our team spot a little bit of danger and they need to leave the player that they're marking in order to deal with that issue, that can happen. And again, this is where our free player then needs to be prepared and ready to pick up any players who are now free within the opposition's team. So if we compare the man marking approach to a zonal marking approach, there is potential for the man marking approach to be viewed as quite simplistic. With a man marking approach, it's essentially our player A marks opposition player A, our player B marks opposition player B, and so on. Whereas with a zonal approach, a team may have a very different structure in their high block, a very different structure in their mid block, 
and a very different structure in a low block and this can differ depending on certain conditions within the game. Because there isn't necessarily a definitive structure within a man marking approach, it can be quite easy for gaps to appear. So for example, as the opposition midfielders are moving around, our midfielders are also moving around with them. Whereas in a zonal approach, we would see our midfielders just be protecting certain areas. So as our players move around to mark opposition midfielders, we may see gaps appear within the midfield area. So we might see a opposition centre-back be able to play a pass into the opposition forward. Because the man-marking approach doesn't necessarily have a definitive structure, so we don't necessarily see a team in a man-marking approach moving to a deep block that looks like a 4-4-2, there are situations where our back line can consist of players that we wouldn't necessarily associate with a defensive line. So we may see our left wing at our left back alongside our two centre backs and then our right back spot we may see our central midfielder. This is a little bit exaggerated. Players who are man marking will usually be assigned players who are in similar areas but these situations can arise with a man marking approach and we may end up with players who for example our central midfielder now who's at right back may not be comfortable defending in these areas, especially defending in 1v1 in these areas against what might be a trickier winger. So if we finally think about our minus one, so this is our striker up against two centre-backs. If our striker is beat by potentially an opposition centre-back travelling into midfield, this can then cause a chain reaction which sees the opposition release three players all over the pitch. So as the centre-back travels into midfield, we then have a situation where one of our midfielders will need to try and apply pressure to the ball. And as they go and apply pressure to the ball, the player that they should be marking is now free. And as that is assessed by our team and we decide that another central midfielder needs to then mark that player, we then open up another free player. And this can cause a chain reaction throughout the team where we then open up free players for the opposition to play into. And this can cause quite a lot of issues. So today we've taken a look at the man marking approach, we've taken a look at what it is, what kind of things it's paired with, and we've taken a look at some of the concepts involved. If you did find the video useful, I do have a Kofi page. Um, thank you to those that have already used that to support me. The coffees have been put to really good use while I've been doing research and writing scripts. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I've been Coach Reese. And I'll see you in the next one.